Hello everyone. So quantum computing. The word quantum itself is so fascinating and when you come to know that you can perform computations with it, topic itself becomes irresistible. In this video, we'll satisfy that curiosity. We'll be talking about quantum computing and how is it even possible? We'll try to compare modern days computers with quantum computers and see how useful and powerful a quantum computer can be. This is going to be an exciting ride. Modern computers runs on processors. Processors runs on logic gates and logic gates are made of transistors. Here are some facts. Companies like Intel and AMD are producing transistors of size 7 nanometers. Silicon, which is used to make transistors, is having an atomic size of 0.2 nanometer, which means that transistors that exist today are just 35 silicon atoms wide. Hence, possibility of making them smaller is itself shrinking. We are reaching towards a physical barrier where classical physics will no longer be valid. And phenomena like quantum tunneling will make it impossible for the transistors to work properly. We are already at the size of an atom and we cannot go beyond that. Or can we? Computers understand and work on the concept of bits, that is zeros and ones. Everything on a computer is a long string of zeros and ones, be it an image, a software, a social networking website, or your favorite song. High charge signal on a computer becomes one and low charge signal becomes zero. Quantum computers, on the other hand, works on the concept of qubits, which is a short form of quantum bits. And that's where all the magic lies. How qubits are different from bits? Well, at a time, a bit can be 1 or 0. Rather than 0 or 1, qubits can be in a state called superposition, where they are both 0 and 1 at the same time, or somewhere on the spectrum between the two. If you flip a coin, result can be either heads or tails. But if you spin it on a table, it still got a chance to land on heads or tails. Until you measure the outcome by stopping the coin, it can be either of them. Superposition is like spinning a coin and it's one of the things that makes quantum computers so powerful. A qubit allows uncertainty, just like nature. In nature, things are uncertain. Quantum computers can use superposition to exploit algorithms such as RSA. It's the same algorithm that is used to encrypt credit card and banking information when you do an online transaction. Modern computers can't exploit RSA encrypted keys or at least would take a couple of years to decrypt one. On the other hand, quantum computers can decrypt it in seconds. Modern computers would try to solve it one by one, while quantum computer can use superposition to try all the possibilities and can solve it in one shot. This would put our data at risk and the only way to fight back is quantum encryption. Quantum encryption keys could not be copied or hacked they would be completely unbreakable. An electron with a charge and magnetic field or a photon with vertical or horizontal polarization can be used as qubits. And you know what? An electron is 100 million times smaller than an atom. This opens door to whole new possibilities in the world of computers. If this didn't amaze you, there's another quantum property that will be used by quantum computers, which is entanglement. In quantum physics, Entangled particles remain connected so that an action performed on one would have an impact on the other, even if they are kept at a large distance. Let's understand this with an example. If you flip two coins, the result of one coin toss would have no impact on the result of the other. They are completely independent. However, if two particles are entangled, they are linked to each other regardless of the distance between them. If result of one is head, result of other would also be had. Among the best known applications of entanglement is quantum teleportation, where quantum information can be transferred from one location to another. Quantum computers can do things that even the best supercomputer of the world just isn't capable of. Let's talk about quantum supremacy. When quantum computer does something that no conventional computer can do in reasonable amount of time, it is called as quantum supremacy. Google has officially announced that it has achieved quantum supremacy. Google says that its 54 qubit Sycamore processor was able to do calculation within 200 seconds. That would have taken world's most powerful supercomputer almost 10,000 years. Later, IBM responded that its supercomputer can perform that calculation in 2.5 years. Now, let's talk about some applications of quantum computing. 
Quantum computing can be used to make cheaper and better medicines or it can be used to securely transfer data using entanglement. We can use it for accurate weather forecast or in self-driving cars. Possibilities are endless. Smash that like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe. Thank you so much.